Hi, we're here at uh, Meritage Resort, and we're here with uh, Brian and Dave from Bacchus Caves, and they're going to show us uh, what goes into building a cave. Thanks for uh, being here with us, Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're going to make us uh, engineers today, right? I'll try, I guess. Yeah, everything we need to know. <laughs> well, we're standing, uh, I guess it's called a portal, right? Of portal. A yeah. Portal of a cave. And uh, first question that comes to my mind is, how do you select this site? What's involved in that? It's always the game. You're always fighting against gravity. That's your number one um, obstacle, I guess. And in the ground, you have to deal with it and do what, you know, what what it demands. The ground it dictates what your, uh, how fast you can go, um, how wide sometimes, um, and what what structure we put up inside. You know, how, the amount of shot creep, the amount of wire. Do you use a boring machine at some point or all points when you dig into the ground like this? Yeah, we have uh, two or three different styles of, uh, of a cutting machines. One's a road header. So this is a business thing, right? This is. I mean, this is the guy that really, these are the pieces that This is the one dig. that does the work. So this spins just... Yeah, yeah, this spins like this, and then you can see the arm The arm back here moves back and forth and up and down. Okay. So it can cut all the whole profile, and then um, the muck falls onto this apron. Okay. And these gathering arms gather it up, send it up through that, that throat conveyor. These things here, the spin, these yeah. things will spin and kind of toss it into the throat? Yep, yep. Okay. Throw, throw it up into the throat conveyor, and then it drags it through and yeah, throws it out the back end, and it comes out here on surface. Right. Oh, look at the this difference. Is what it used to look like. Now, how long does it take to grind from this to it, that? It, it, again, it's so totally ground dependent. I mean, well, I mean it, it, it's, in this case. Like, in like, here, we were losing them quicker, I think, than we were replacing them because they were just popping off. I mean, when we were cutting the, the hard rock in the bottom in there. But like, if you were in that red stuff there, you could probably go a year without replacing them. Now, what's this piece cost? I mean, do you, can you just buy that Jeez, part? I don't know. We buy them by the bucket load. I've never, <laughs> I mean, really, I, I couldn't tell you individually. I've, Brian, seen, I've seen these at Walmart. You They're know like what it is? cost. Well, yeah, I mean, no, they were two ninety five. I'm pretty sure. Twenty, they're twenty seven dollars each. Twenty seven dollars. The advantage of the road headers for the harder ground, um, it's a little bit faster than than we have two smaller ones, a backhoe with a small cutter on it, and then we have an excavator with a medium sized cutter on it. How big is this particular cave? This one is about twenty two thousand. Yeah. Twenty two thousand square feet. Yeah. Is. I don't know if that's a record, but it seems huge to no, me. I, there's some bigger ones around here. <laughs> there are, but uh, it, it's a nice size cave. I mean, and it started out about 7,000, and they decided to do the spa underground as well. So it's, it's pretty, wow. pretty How, cool. Is this intended to be any wine storage at all in this facility? No, they're going to have a tasting bar, um, and then the banquet hall, and then the spa in the back. So really, it's um, I think it's just for a little retail stuff. Excellent. What do you say we go inside? Let's do it. Inside we go. This will be a double double tunnel. We'll have a walkway on one side and a treatment room on the other side of this um, for their spa um, in both of these areas here. All right, what he's doing right here, I mean, this is kind of interesting. We'll take you out and show you another tunneling machine. Um, and it looks like he's having some problems with it because these things are just such severe duty that they're into. I mean, they're breaking rock, they're cutting all day long. But this is one of the smaller cutter heads you can get on the market right now. And it's great for these little trenches and it helps not having to over excavate. And it can get through there just fine, but you can see it would never get through this rock here. Right. By the way, this dirt that we're seeing, is this unusual? I mean, kind of dirt? I just. This is very, I mean, it's unusual for us. We have not run into, most of our jobs to date have been in what we consider bad ground, right. which is very hard, blocky, rocks with mud. I mean, it's just a messy, messy, hard ground to dig. This stuff here was beautiful. You could have built anything you wanted in this. I mean, it seems like real dirt versus all rocks. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a bloody fist fight the entire time out in the front end of the tunnel. So we got back here, and this went really well this way. And I mean, we just wish we, the whole tunnel was in this. We would have been done in four months rather than 12. So when you when you get down and see something like that, you go, yeah, yeah, this is finally, great. <laughs> finally, yeah. Okay, we're uh, we're here watching these guys uh, shot create some footers. So these guys are plugged up right now. Is that the deal? Yeah, they're uh, they got a rock lock in their in their concrete lines. So. That gun got something like the intensity of a fire hose, or is it pretty yeah, easy to hold? It's pumping about 15, 1800 psi of the concrete itself. Plus, then we're adding air right there at the nozzle. That's what accelerates it, so it'll stick on the wall. 
Papo, shoot a little bit on the sides too, okay? A little bit on the sides. A little more here, okay? It's gonna get fairly dusty in here in a little bit. Okay. We might wanna move along. Okay. Dave, can you explain what am I seeing here? Right now what they're doing, we've got the, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got the structure up and everything else. They're coming in and digging trenches to bring the utilities in here. This is going to be the sitting room or the waiting room for the spa area. So they're digging all these trenches in to bring ventilation pipes through these big ventilation holes that are going to come down to the floor and then they're going to run ventilation up. And they, you know, they've also got drains and all kinds of other utilities throughout this whole thing. Telephone, oh, yeah, computer, I mean, all that stuff. Yeah, they, I mean they've got a whole point of sale system down there. At, uh, you know, this uh, one of the things that's kind of, I think it's interesting, you see this orange line here. This is really where the floor is going to be. So I'm standing below where the uh, eventual finished floor is going to be because they need this area for pipes and, you know, the, all the utilities. So what do we got? Two, three feet here. Yeah, it looks like about two and a half, three feet yeah, that they've, they've so dug out for trenches. Just to build a trench. And obviously they don't need this, this much space, but they're just yeah. kind of they're making the room that's available. So, um, you know, think about how much easier it made it for him. He was talking about the dirt. You know, he wasn't dealing with all those rocks and, right. you know, all this soft dirt made it really easy to uh, trench this out. You're about, you're going to ask me if I'm about ready to do okay. You about ready to spring for a cave? I got to have one of these suckers. Yeah, I, I got to have it. You got the room, you got the dirt. Oh, it's a, it's all you need is just well, room and dirt. Well, you got plenty of room because it's right. underground, right? Oh, I forgot. There's money. You oh. got the money to do it, too? Oh, I know. That, that would be a little bit of detail, wouldn't it? I mean, you got to admit, it would be cool to have something like this. Oh, yeah, so, no, know, question. I, no question. I mean, everybody, every wine geek could talk about building their own cellar, let alone if you had your own cave. You know, that takes it to a whole new level of geekdom. Okay, now the big question. How much does a cave like this cost? Well, for the excavation, I'm sure, you know, the $100 mark is still around there. Just for the excavation support, $100 a square foot. 120. Yeah, and, fi and finished caves are going anywhere from, say, 150 all the way up to 350 dollars. I mean, and plus. I mean, obviously, some people putting in limestone floors and imported chandeliers and stone and brick and everything else inside. Actually, I'm surprised. That price seems pretty reasonable considering you have houses. You can pay 200 dollars a square foot. Certainly. So you know, all the work involved in this. That's that seems reasonable to me. Yeah, we compete with that. You know, I mean, you have to. You know. It's is this a big business now? I mean, huge business building these caves out here? There's quite a few companies doing it. Yeah, seven or so. Fairly oh, steady yeah, in, steady in this area. Yeah. So how backed up are you guys in terms of work? Oh, we have stuff stacked out for a <laughs> while. <laughs> that's uh, gainful employment, though, for, for a while, huh? <laughs> it is. That's right.